In this example problem, we're going to calculate the tensile and shear capacity for a post-installed adhesive anchor. And the post-installed adhesive anchor, some of the details about it are shown here. We have two post-installed adhesive anchors that are connected with a, a plate with given dimensions, and the anchors are spaced uh, as shown, um, so 10 inches from one edge and 12 inches from another edge. You can see the, the thickness of the element that we're anchoring into is 10 inches. So we're going to determine the tensile capacity of the post-installed adhesive anchor, the shear capacity, and then we're going to look and see if the connection can hold a given five kips of tension and six kips of shear at the same time. We're given some additional details on our concrete component the concrete strength of our component is 4 KSI, and the thickness of the component is 10 inches. It's normal weight concrete. We have no supplemental edge reinforcement, and we're going to assume that the concrete remains uncracked uh, while the connection or while the adhesive anchor is in service. Some of the additional details about our anchor are given here, including the, the type, the size, including the area of the anchor, uh, the material of the anchor, the adhesive bond, stress of the anchor, and the, uh, the adhesive that's used in the connection, the embedment length, the effective depth and effective length, and we need an anchor category. So we're going to assume an anchor category one for the strength reduction factors. Our Next step, or the, the first part of the problem, is to determine the tensile capacity of the post-installed uh, anchor. So to do this, we need to look at the different failure mechanisms that can happen with the anchor. And the first one that can happen is the steel st strength in tension. So we can just have a failure of the anchor in direct tension. The tensile capacity can be found using this equation from ACI 318. We have our given area and given ultimate tensile strength for our anchor. So we can then calculate our, t our tensile capacity just by taking the area 0.334 square inches times the uh, ultimate strength or the, the strength of the anchor 65 KSI, uh, which will give us a tensile capacity of 21.7 kips. We can use our Strength reduction factor for the steel anchor with a, assuming a ductile failure and intention of 0.75 to find our factor capacity 0.75 times 21.7 equals 16.3 kips. This is the capacity of each individual anchor. So the total capacity for the group would be this value times the number of anchors, which we have two anchors. Next, we're going to find the concrete breakout strength and tension for our anchor group. The concrete breakout strength is going to depend on the location of the anchor relative to the edge. And we're going to assume that the breakout area extends 1.5 H sub EF, where H sub EF is the embedment length of the anchor here, so given as 4.5 inches. So it extends 1.5 H sub EF away from the center of the anchor until it hits the edge. So we can see here that our 1.5 H sub EF is going to be equal to 6.75 inches. And the two edge distances that we have, CA1 and CA2, uh, are both greater than our 6.75 inches. So on the one side we have 10 inches, and on the other side we have 12 inches. So 10 inches on one side and 12 inches on the other. So both 10 and 12 inches is greater than our 1.5 1 uh, H sub EF, which is equal to 6.75 inches. So we know that we can find our breakout area by just taking 1.8 H sub EF on each side of the bolt group and plus the spacing in between here. So uh, spacing in between is eight inches. So that would give us that dimension in the horizontal direction. 
And in the vertical, dire vertical direction, we only have one line of bolts. So we just take times uh, 1.5 h sub e f plus 1.5 h sub e f. So plugging in our different values for our spacing and our uh, embedment depth, we can find our a sub n c equal to 290.25 square inches. We next need to find the breakout area of a single anchor, assuming we're not limited by edge distance or spacing. So here you can see a single anchor will have an, an embedment length of h sub e f, and our breakout area is assuming a, a 35 degree angle here from the bottom of the anchor. So uh, we'll extend 1.5 times h sub e f on each side of the anchor. So we can find our uh, breakout area that's not limited just by taking 2 times 1.5 h sub e f in each direction. So uh, 2 times 1.5 h sub e f times 2 times 1.5 h sub e f, which will give us 9 times h sub e f squared. Plugging in our, our known uh, embedment depth here, 4.5 inches, we can find an a sub n c o of 180.25 square inches. So next we can calculate the different coefficients that we'll need for our breakout strength equation. And these coefficients we can just find based on our given geometry, our, our given anchor uh, dimensions and details, and the, the coefficients from uh, ACI 318. The first factor here is a breakout edge factor. And this factor is based on how close our anchor is to the edge of the member. So our our CA min, our minimum edge distance, is greater than or equal to 1.5 h sub e f. So uh, if you go to the last slide, you'll see the minimum edge or the distances of 10 and 12 inches. The minimum is 10 inches, which is greater than our 1.5 h sub e f. So we can use a, a psi factor here of 1.0. Our breakout cracking factor, we're assuming we have no cracking that was given in our problem statement. And we have a post-installed adhesive anchor. So our breakout cracking factor, uh, our psi factor here is going to be equal to 1.4. Our next factor takes into account the critical edge distance required to develop the basic strength as controlled by concrete breakout uh, or bond. So we'll come to this table here from ACI 318. We have an adhesive anchor, so we find that our critical edge distance C sub AC is going to be equal to 2 times H sub EF. So we can plug in our, our H sub EF of 4.5 and see that our, our C sub AC is going to be equal to 9 inches. Our minimum edge distance is the minimum of the 10 inches and 12 inches, so 10 inches here. And we can see then that our C, C sub A min is greater than C sub AC. So we'll have a, a breakout splitting factor here of, of 1.0. Our next factor takes into account the eccentricity of the load compared to the connection. And we're going to assume that we don't have any eccentricity with our load. So we'll use an eccentricity factor of 1.0. Now that we have all of our different coefficients for our breakout strength, we can calculate our, our basic breakout strength using this equation shown here. And for this equation, we, we need a few more factors. We need a, a case of C, which takes into account whether we have a cast-in anchor or a post-installed anchor. We have a post-installed anchor, so our case of A is going to be, uh, sorry, our, our case of C is going to be equal to 17. And then we have a uh, lambda factors. So a lightweight concrete modification factor for anchorage, lambda sub a, and uh, this includes a lambda factor, which is the lightweight concrete modification factor. So we have normal weight concrete, so our lambda will be 1.0, and we're looking at an enhanced adhesive anchor concrete failure. So we're going to have uh, our lambda sub a equal to 0.8 times our lambda. So 0 0.8 times 1.0, which will equal 0 0.8. We now have all the coefficients that we need. So we'll first calculate the basic breakout strength using our ACI 318 expression. So our, we'll have our n sub b equal 17 times our lambda a 0.8 
times the square root of 4,000 PSI. And I'm going to divide this by 1,000 pounds per kip to get my units into kips. And then take this times our H sub EF 4.5 inches to the 1.5 power. So we'll get our N sub B here equal to 8.21 kips. We can then use this N sub B in our uh, breakout strength for the group. So we'll have our N sub C, B, G, so the group breakout strength equal to the ratio of N, A sub N, C divided by A sub N, C naught. So our group area divided by our, our base area for a single anchor. So 290.25 inches squared divided by 180.25 inches squared and then times all of our psi factors. So 1.0, 1.0 times 1.4 times 1.0, and then times our N sub B, 8.21 kips. So we've got N sub CBG equal to 18.3 kips. So that's our, our group concrete breakout strength and tension. We can factor this with our strength reduction factor, 0.65 in this case, and then take, uh, yeah, so take our 18.3 times 0.65 to get our factored capacity of 11.9 kips. And this is the concrete breakout strength for the group of anchors. So uh, for both anchors, bo uh, you know, the two anchors together. The other failure mechanisms that we might need to check for our uh, anchors is the pull-out strength for an individual anchor. Um, we don't need to check that here for the adhesive anchor. Uh, we also have a concrete side face blowout strength, and this checks only for cast in headed anchors. So we don't need to check that here uh, either for our post-installed adhesive anchor. Our next failure mechanism that we'll check is the bond strength of the adhesive anchor in tension, uh, looking at our anchor group. And uh, the bond strength is dependent if we have a single anchor or an anchor in a group. So we'll have an uh, anchor in a group here. And our strength reduction factor, we have a category one post-installed anchor without supplemental reinforcement. So we'll have a phi factor equal to 0.65. The bond strength for the group, we can find using this equation shown here. So first we need to find some of our different areas and to do that we'll need to first find the distance to develop the full bond strength which is C sub N A uh, in ACI 318. So we have a, an equation to calculate that distance shown here which is dependent on the shear strength of the adhesive being used. So uh, in, in combination with the adhesive anchor and the diameter of our anchor. So Plugging in our known values here, uh, we were given the uh, shear strength of the ad adhesive in the anchor to be 1,350 PSI and our anchor diameter to be 0.75 inches. So plugging in those values, uh, we can get a C sub NA equal to 8.31 inches. This C sub NA uh, is less than our edge distance in both directions, uh, 12 inches and 10 inches. So we'll uh, be able to calculate the area based on just this C sub NA, which we'll do on the next slide. The area of influence for the single adhesive anchor, not limited by the edge distance, we can find as shown here, where we just have a distance C sub NA extending from each side of the anchor. So this will give us a total area here of two C sub NA squared. Uh, which will give us a total area of 276.1 square inches. Uh, as I said on the previous slide, our C sub NA is less than our edge distance, 10 inches and 12 inches. So we're going to have the area of influence for our adhesive anchor to be equal to C sub NA plus S1, the spacing in between, plus C sub NA. So that'll give us our horizontal, uh, horizontal dimension. And the 
vertical dimension is going to be 2 times c sub n a, since we only have one row of uh, anchors in that direction. So we can find our a sub n a equal to 409.2 uh, square inches when we plug in our known values. Next, we can find some of our different factors that we'll need. And we can start with our breakout edge factor. We see that our c sub a minimum, so the minimum of our 10 and 12 inches, or 10 inches, is greater than our c sub n a, uh, which was 8.31 inches. So we can use a, a psi factor here equal to 1.0. Some of the other factors that we'll need to find the bond strength of our adhesive anchor group are shown here. The first is our eccentricity factor. So if we had an eccentricity for our tension load, then we would plug in our eccentricity here. Uh, we're assuming that we have no eccentricity, so our factor here is going to be equal to one. Next, we have our bond splitting factor. And because we have uh, uncracked concrete without supplemental reinforcement, this factor, the psi factor, is just going to be equal to 1.0. Uh, next, we need our lightweight concrete modification factor. Here, we're down here in the table, so now we have an adhesive anchor bond failure. So with a bond failure for adhesive anchors, we're, uh, our lambda sub a is going to be equal to 0.6 times lambda. Our lambda is still 1.0 for normal weight concrete, so our lambda sub a factor is just going to be equal to 0.6. We're now ready to find the basic bond strength and the anchor group bond strength using our ACI 318 equations. So first, our basic bond strength N sub BA is going to be equal to uh, lambda A, so 0.6 times our uh, strength of the adhesive 1.35 KSI times pi times the diameter of our anchor 0.75 inches, and then times the embedment length of our anchor 4.5 inches. Uh, so this is essentially the surface area uh, of the anchor um, embedded in, in the concrete. So our N sub BA is going to be equal to 8.6 kips. Uh, so then we can plug that into our anchor group bond strength equation here. So our, our ratio of, of our areas for our group compared to a single anchor without uh, limiting edge distance. So 409.2 square inches uh, divided by 276.1 square inches times 1.0 times 1.0 times 1.0, all of our psi factors and then times 8.6 kips. So we'll get an N sub A G equal to 12.7 kips. We can include our strength reduction factor then, uh, which is 0.65 for these category one post-installed anchors without supplemental reinforcement. And we can find our factored bond strength for the group equal to 0.65 times 12.7, which will give us 8.3 kips. The tensile strength of the connection then is going to be the minimum of these three. First, we had the steel strength that we had before. So we found the capacity of a single anchor and for the steel strength, we need to take it times two because we have two anchors. So that would give us the strength there of 32.6 kips. Then we have our concrete breakout strength and the bond strength, and both of these were for the group of anchors, so we don't multiply these by, by two. These will just be those values. The minimum of these is going to be the 8.3 kips, so this is the tensile strength of the anchor group, and it's controlled by the bond strength of the adhesive anchor. We'll next move on to the next part of the problem where we're determining the shear capacity of our post-installed adhesive anchor. And again, we need to calculate the capacity looking at the different failure mechanisms. And the first failure mechanism that we'll look at is the steel strength in shear for an individual anchor. We can find 
the shear strength using uh, an equation from this table here. Uh, we have a we have a post installed anchor where the sleeve does not extend through the shear plane. So we'll use the equation shown here. We know our anchor area. This was given, and we know the strength of our uh, steel in the anchor. That was also given. So we can plug those values into our uh, anchor shear strength equation here. So we'll have 0.6 or we'll have our, our shear strength V sub SA equal to 0.6 times the area of our anchor, 0.334 square inches, times the uh, strength of the anchor, 65 KSI. And this will give us a shear strength of 13 kips. We can take this strength times our phi factor 0.65 to give us the factored shear strength of an individual anchor, 8.5 kips. And then we have two anchors in this anchor group. So we can take uh, this capacity times two, which will give us the, the group capacity equal to 17 kips. We will now look at the failure mechanism for a, a concrete breakout a uh, concrete breakout strength and shear for our anchor group. We can find the group shear breakout using this equation from ACI 318, and we'll need several distances for the calculations and the determination of our different uh, coefficients and, and factors. So I, I'm summarizing some of those here. We need our, our component thickness, which was given as 10 inches. So that's the thickness of the component. Uh, we have our edge distance one was 12 inches. Our edge distance two was 10 inches. The spacing between the anchors is eight inches, and uh, we'll need uh, to take our, our edge distance one times 1.5 and three. So I, I'm giving those here. Uh, we can see our, our thickness is less than 1.5 times uh, our edge distance C sub A1. So um, we'll see how that affects our area on the next couple slides. Uh, and then what our, our spacing is also uh, less than three times C sub A1. So we can find our, our shear breakout area then as shown here. Uh, we're going to be controlled by the edge on this side here. Um, so we'll have CA2 and as the distance between the uh, outside center of, the, um, of our anchor and the edge, uh, the spacing in between those, and then 1.5 times C sub A in the other direction. And then our, our shear area is going to have a height equal to the thickness uh, because our thickness is less than 1.5 C sub A1. So here we can find our shear breakout area uh, limited by the edge distance and spacing uh, equal to the, this horizontal distance, which we talked about, and uh, times the thickness H sub A. So plugging in our known values, we'll get a, a shear breakout area of 360 square inches. The Shear breakout area, if we weren't limited by any kind of edge distance, would be equal to 4.5 times C sub A1 squared. So plugging in our, our values here, C sub A1 is equal to 12 inches, and we'll get a A sub V C naught equal to 648 square inches. There are a few different uh, coefficients that we'll need to calculate uh, for our concrete breakout strength and shear. Uh, the first is a breakout edge factor. So our C sub A2 is less than 1.5 C sub A1, so we're controlled by the edge distance. So we need to use the equation shown here. And uh, plugging in our known values for C sub A2 and C sub A1, we'll get a uh, factor here, a psi factor equal to 0.867. Our breakout cracking factor, if we don't have any cracking, is equal to 1.4. So we'll just use that value here. The breakout thickness factor, we can calculate using this equation here. So uh, our psi sub hv is equal to the square root of 1.5 times c sub a1, 12 inches divided by 10 inches. Uh, it will give us a factor here of 1.34, which is greater than 1.0, so that's okay. So we'll use 1.34 there. And then we have a, a breakout eccentricity factor. Uh, this takes into account the eccentricity of our shear force uh, compared to the anchor group. And we're going to assume that we don't have any eccentricity, so our, our psi factor here is going to be equal to 1.0.
We can now find the basic single anchor breakout strength, V sub B, which is equal to the minimum of these two equations shown here. So again, we'll need our lambda sub A factor for our adhesive anchors with a concrete failure, our lambda sub A is still going to be equal to 0.8 times lambda, which will be 0.8 here because our lambda equals one for normal weight concrete. We'll need a load bearing length of the anchor for shear, which if we have, if we assume that we have a constant stiffness over the full length of the embedded anchor, then our L sub E is equal to our H sub E F, which is equal to 4.5 inches. We can then plug all of our known values into these equations from the previous slide to find the basic single anchor, anchor breakout strength. So our V sub B A, uh, plugging in all of, all of our values is going to be equal to 18.2 kips and our V sub B B is going to be equal to 18.9 kips. The minimum of these two is going to be 18.2. So that's, that'll be what our uh, V sub B is equal to. We can plug this V sub B into our equation for our, our group shear breakout V sub C B G, uh, which we can find uh, as shown here. And we'll see our, our group shear breakout is equal to 16.5 kips. Our fee factor, our, our strength reduction factor, when we are for this failure mechanism where we have no supplemental reinforcement is equal to 0.7. So our factored shear breakout 0.7 times 16.5 will give us uh, a value of 11.5 kips. And note that this is for the group of anchors. So uh, this is the factored shear breakout strength for uh, our, our group of two anchors. The last failure mechanism that we need to look at in shear is the concrete pryout strength for, for our anchor group. And you can see kind of what that failure mechanism looks like here with our, our shearing and the prying out of our anchor. Uh, we need to find a couple different coefficients. Uh, so our coefficient first, our K sub CP is dependent on if our H sub EF, our embedment length for our anchor is greater than or, or less than 2.5 inches. In our case, our embedment length is 4.5 inches greater than 2.5 inches. So our K sub CP is going to be equal to 2.0. The N sub CPG value for this is based on some of the uh, axial or, or some of the tensile capacities that we found earlier in this example. So our N sub AG or sorry, N sub CPG is equal to the minimum of N sub AG, our adhesive uh, group bond strength and N sub CBG, which is our breakout strength. So we found these two before to be 12.7 and 18.3 kips. The minimum of those two is 12.7. So that's our uh, N sub CPG, which is uh, will be equal to 12.7 kips. Our group pryout strength is then going to be equal to 2.0 times 12.7 kips, which will be 25.4 kips. We can take that times our strength reduction factor for pryout shear 0.7 to get our factored shear pryout equal to 17.8 kips. The maximum shear strength for our adhesive anchor is then going to be the minimum uh, of these three failure mechanisms. So we have first our factored shear strength of our group, which was 17 kips. So we have two anchors times the individual shear strength for each anchor. We had the factored shear breakout strength of the entire group of 11.5 kips, and then our factored shear pryout strength for the group equal to 17.8 kips. So we can see that the minimum here is 11.5, so that'll be the factored shear strength of our, uh, our post-installed adhesive anchor connection. In the last part of the problem, we wanna see if our connection can hold a given tensile load of five kips and shear load of six kips at the same time. So in, in general, tension is going to decrease the shear capacity of an anchorage in concrete, and shear is going to decrease the tensile capacity in concrete of an anchorage in concrete. So we need to account for the interaction between tension and shear. 
we can neglect the interaction between the two if the ratio of our demand to our factored capacity in tension and shear are both less than 0.2. So in our example, we need to first calculate these ratios and see how they compare to 0.2. So starting with our axial capacity, we have a 5 kip demand divided by our capacity 8.3 kips, which will give us a ratio here of 0.6. We can see that this is greater than 0.2, so already we know we need to consider the interaction between tension and shear. But we also need the, the ratio of our shear strength uh, for our interaction equation, so we'll calculate that as well. So our demand here in shear is 6 kips, and our capacity in shear is going to be 11.5 kips. So this will give us a, a capacity here, or a, a ratio of 0.2. 5 2 kips. So again, we're, we're greater than 0.2 there, so we need to consider the interaction. So then we can come to our interaction equation, which is shown here. And with this interaction equation, uh, or we can plug in our ratio values that we found above. So 0.6 plus 0.52, which will be equal to 1.12. And we can compare that to our limit of 1.2 and see that 1.12 is less than 1.2. So our design check is OK. So our, our connection can hold and, and would be designed properly for a 5 kip tension load and a 6 kip uh, shear load. So with that, this concludes this design example.